Okay, so the last time we were here, we created a Pinterest account. We took some time to set it up a little bit because you don't want to have a plain and basic uh, Pinterest account. You want to have your logo, you want to have biography and such. So we also created a few pin boards and added a couple of pins. We'll talk a, a little bit more about the usefulness of Pinterest. So you want to go ahead and log in to Pinterest and then we'll proceed. Make sure you remember your password and then log in. All right, so I logged in. It's going to remind me there's an app for that. There's the app version of, uh, of Pinterest. You can get it for iPhone and Android, etc. Um, and so it takes me back to the home screen here. Mine's still telling me to um, register my or to confirm my email. But what I'm going to do then is the other aspect of um, Pinterest, where we talked about clicking on that little plus symbol to add pins. We can either upload or pin from your website. And last time I had skipped the, the pin it button. This time I'll, I'll mention it here. And what this does is it gives you a faster way to add content to Pinterest. So if you do click the plus sign, it might pop up, I closed it, but if you, if, if you then click here, get our browser button to save ideas even faster. I'm using Google Chrome, so mine might look a little different than yours, but I'm going to select get the button, and it'll say, okay, get our button. It'll uh, add an extension with 8 million user downloads. Very popular. And now what I've got is a brand new pin it button as part of my web browser as part of this web browser on this computer. If obviously, if you do it on your own computer, it'll be better. The way it works is um, basically, well, it says click the pin, but really what you need to do, the first step is go to a website, your website or someone's website, go to a website, and then click the pin it button. And what that will do is it will scan that page that you're looking at for you to find a picture. And then you can pin it quickly to your boards. So let's say I left Pinterest and I went over to uh, one of my other websites over here. I'd say, oh, I want to pin something from here. Well, I'm not in Pinterest anymore. I closed it. But I have that pin it button on the top right corner as part of my web browser. So I'm always able to then click that. You get the pin button by clicking the plus button. So you see on the bottom right on Pinterest, you have this little plus button. Click the plus button and then select the first option, get the browser button. So I'm over here on this side, and this is, this is weird. What is this picture? Oh, I see. That's my icon blown up really, really huge or something. What is that? Hmm. So um, clicking on the pin it button, then it's going to analyze a page and find find relevant pictures, and then it's going to let me uh, pin it quickly to my to my account. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's pin that. It pops up, like I've seen before, there's the text, and then um, where would you like to save it to, and what sort of, um, what sort of uh, message do you want to write here? Let's say I won't uh, just leave it as is. Well, actually, I'll, I'll erase it. Say erase that. And I'll just put it in a, a new board I'll call maybe logos. Notice I can create a board quickly here also. Added it to the logos. And now on my account, you go back to Pinterest, I go back to my account, and I have a new board logos. So that plus symbol right there, we saw it last time, but the new thing was adding that adding that little extension, adding this extra pin it button to the web browser. So 
any site I visit. Let's see. That's a really good question. This is a gray area. This, there's no direct answer. On the one hand, a particular company might, might hate that because I'm taking their image and putting it on my site. But the good thing is that the, um, the, there's a built-in link to the pin of where it came from, so Pinterest can keep track of all of the pictures that were uploaded. So if I, it's, but it, it's kind of like, I have to complain to Pinterest. My picture was stolen. They will check it and then they will take it down. Uh, so that's the closest that, that I have of, of safety as a company, that if I put my photos up there and then someone puts them on Pinterest, I have to complain. It's not that the person has to agree to put the photo because they own the photo. Um, there's no network really that thinks about it in that way. It thinks about it in the terms of someone complains, then we'll deal with it. Then we'll worry about it. Yeah, Peter will take responsibility if you do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then they'll do something. If you do complain, there's a there's a button that says flag an image and such. But it's sort of like it lets everyone do what they want, and then if someone complains, then they will do something about it. But it's better, right? Like you have it in marketing for you. The more people pin it, the more people see it. Exactly. That's the both sides of that coin. Some people might say, I don't want my pictures there because I I don't like Pinterest, I don't want people to know about it, or whatever. And some people will say, Yes, great, share my picture on Pinterest, share it to your friends and family. That's free advertising for me. So it's that's why it's a gray area in the old but it depends on the image though. It depends on the image and the creator of the image. Yeah. Every network is like that. Lotus, there's a little tweet button here. I can put something from here that I didn't create on my Twitter, and yes, I can make it be like, oh, I, I wrote this. But then if they complain or someone else complains, then Twitter might you know do something about it. Well, um, yeah, Google has a brand new boards, which I don't know how well they're catching on. They're well, interesting. I posted something, they're pretty good. They're working? Another pretty good place to go post Well, something. the communities. Community, yeah. Yes, communities. They have communities and collections. That's what I'm confusing. They have okay. communities and collections. Communities definitely works. The other one, collections, that one's the one that maybe I'm not sure if that one's quite working. That's the one I was confusing. But yeah, communities are really good on, on um, Google+. Plus. Although they're not exactly communities on Pinterest because really the only people that would have access to them are those that know that they exist when they follow you. Right. Or, uh, but then communities on Google+, Plus, anyone can search them and find them really easily. Yeah. So let's say I'm over on Social Media Examiner, I click the pin it button. These are all of the pictures it found. This is basically free advertising for Social Media Examiner. Let's say I wanted to, how to use Social Media Insights to improve your marketing. I want to pin that one. So it pops so up. If yeah. a company is not inside Pinterest, so like a website is not, not what do you mean, um, signing with, uh, you cannot share or pin stuff? No, you still can. Oh, yeah? Yeah, if a company or a website doesn't have any connection on Pinterest, you can still pin their stuff on Pinterest. But, but most of the website says that uh, there's rights uh, for image. And That's true. Okay. Ex exactly. Uh, and on a technical level, as soon as you create an image and upload it online, on a technical level, you own the copyright and the rights of it. Um, you don't have to put copyright Victor Campos. As long as you create it, as long as I created it and put it on my website, I have legal protection. I can get further legal protection by putting a copyright on my website, putting a copyright or a watermark on the image itself. You know, there's lots of ways for me then to fully protect myself. But this social media and such is still such a wild west. Look at I can easily borrow someone's picture. And maybe social media examiner is perfectly fine with it. They want that, more advertising. And the one company might say, no, take my photo off. So then I would have to hopefully comply and take it down. So you, you, you may run roll letters of sharing on papers, uh, pictures from websites. Say that again. You may get into problems. Get mm. from I would say they have their page for rights and things like that. Yes, but it really depends on where you're sharing it from. And when I do this for real clients, 
we put their own original photos. It's never really a question about using anyone else's. Like I have that Texcoco taco shop. We're not going to borrow someone else's photo of someone's taco. We're not going to rip off a Taco Bell taco. We're going to shoot a photo of the taco of that restaurant and put it on. So there's never that problem sharing someone else's anyway. We're sharing our own original content. But it's okay to share other people's content, usually. And if you're worried about it, then don't do it. It's fine. You just have to put your own content. You don't know if you're going to get into trouble with someone else. If you feel that you might, don't do it. There's other, other things that you can do. You can go to like uh, pixabay.com and get those free photos there. So here, like, I'm removing completely the description from Pixabay. And I, and I can write, look at this great post I wrote. Pinterest will allow that because it's, you know, it's, it, the algorithm is not smart enough to fully understand that. But Pinterest is keeping track of everything that's being posted, the original link, even though I erased it, look at that, it still says pinned from social media examiner. So Pinterest does keep track of this attribution. Who did it come from? It says it came from the MCB, it came from social media examiner. So it still is going to have a link back to the originators. And I think that's for Pinterest for them enough to say, we're legally covered, we're giving you credit to the originator. A person like social media examiner could still say, here's our lawyers, we're going to sue you for letting your content be spread so easily. But these social networks are protecting themselves. Think about it in terms of the phone company. If a terrorist calls another terrorist on the phone, is AT&T required or um, is AT&T liable? No, it's a phone. Yes, it, that's true. But um, in theory, uh, no, AT&T is not liable for that because they are just a carrier a common carrier. They call that in the legal terms. They're a common carrier. Everyone can use them and AT&T is not responsible for the content. These companies are trying to be defined the same way. That we're creating this platform, it's up to you to share what you want and police yourself and such, but we're not going to be responsible for vi copyright violations. And it may turn out that that's how these companies end up, good for them, or it may turn out that it's going to be good for the copyright holders, where they will be liable, but the, the genie's out of the bottle. There's so many social networks to try to fix this regarding copyrights. It's going to be very difficult. We're going to need to kind of work the laws to make everyone happy. So I posted a little bit of content from outside of the website, hopefully mostly your own content. I wouldn't say it's good, but it's a way to do it, yes. And I'm going to show you the, the, the tools, and then you can decide how to use them. So if you want to check, is your are any of your pictures are on Pinterest? Well, if you've got a website, you can do a search on Pinterest. Um, put your website address there, and it'll pop up to see what things might have come from your website on Pinterest. Okay, so we've talked about adding content to Pinterest. I recommend as most original content.
content of yours as possible, your own photos, your own text, your own blog posts, um, adding them either through the upload button right here, or from your website, or with the pin it button. But what you also want to think about and what you want to do is be social in these social networks. Right now, I have, if I go to my profile, I have zero followers. No one is paying attention to me. I've made some boards and I've made some pins and I've done some following, but I don't have any followers. So I, I don't believe I mentioned it last time, but let me show you a, a Pinterest profile of actually a former student of mine who then um, graduated Southwestern College and uh, went on to start a, his own web design company, social media, all of that stuff. And uh, he's, he's used Pinterest like a superstar. So if you go check out his profile here, pinterest.com slash Mosher13, this is Chuck. He sat in this very room a few years ago. Um, and so he's using Pinterest, and he's on Twitter, and he's on Instagram, and he's on all of these networks. But he's using Pinterest really well. And I can say that because he has 35,000 followers. So he's got 55 boards, 5,000 and a half pins, likes. He's following only 151, and he's got 35,000 followers. So let's see, what's his secret? I got more pins right here. You have more pins? Yeah, more pins, but not followers. <laughs> well, let's look what he did here. Notice he had lots of boards. He has 55 boards. How many boards do you have? Uh, nine. Nine. So I asked him also, like, how did, how did you do so well on Pinterest? And he said, really, it's about finding the right content for the right audience. And that's what all the big secret is of all the social networks. He's got a, a board about illustrations, so people that care about illustrations are going to follow that. A board about infographics, technology, tattoos, fun stuff, logos. And no, diversity, pretty much. A lot of diversity. Yeah. He's casting a big net. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not, you know, have, he doesn't have a board about every possible thing. I don't see anything about fashion, really, and, uh, you know, what else? Nothing really about... Uh, biker bars or whatever he doesn't he doesn't have a board about everything when you try to be something for everyone then you're something for no one because you don't focus so more boards gives you more followers than more pins on one board I wouldn't necessarily say that no, but for it, him for his board that's a lot of value yeah but for him it's probably a combination of things it could be that you've got it really it depends on a lot of factors, so I cannot say that that is true. I could easily say the opposite is true. Few boards, lots of pins. I could also say few pins, few boards will also work. You don't know until you try it. This stuff is free. You can create boards and pins easily. Yeah. Can you click more on boards? Sure. Infographics. This is one of his most popular ones. This board on its own has 33,000 followers. So he's tapped into a concept that people really care about. So he put out a bunch of boards. Okay, Infographics has 33,000 followers. Let's see this one over here of Fun Stuff Costumes. This one has 1,000 followers. Just the board itself. Remember, you can follow individual boards instead of the whole thing. Like, you might not care about costumes, but you really care about infographics. So you just follow that one. Let's say you really care about uh, Star Wars stuff. Let's see, this one has... 1,000 followers also. My Instagram photo. So that's his own photos that he creates on Instagram. And that's got 1,000 also. Um, so this is not all his original stuff. This is repurposed. He didn't draw that. He didn't make that. He didn't write it that. links to other websites. No? It links to the website. It has links back to the original website. That's why it's okay that he's borrowing so many people's photos, because it goes back to the original website. And so basically, he's casting a wide net to catch as many fish as possible. Look at this one. Stuff I should buy my wife. So he's got here 1,200 also. Does he work in marketing? 
yeah. Uh, his big thing, though, is web development, programming and such, but he uh -huh. does do marketing. A little bit of everything, because nowadays we've got to be a jack of all trades. Right. We've got to be able to do the website code and the website design and the social media and everything. If we can do as much of it as possible, the best. He's got a bunch of these recipe ones. Chicken, seafood, pork. And so kids close that rock. He's Mosher. Mosher, Mosher 13. And so one tactic is post a lot of stuff. A variety of your own stuff, other people's stuff, original stuff, repurposed stuff. Because you're going to cast a net and catch some fish. If you cast more than one net, you catch more than one fish. And so spending, setting aside 10 minutes once a day to post something on Pinterest, 10 minutes once a day to work on Twitter a little bit, 10 minutes once a day to work on Google Plus a little bit, the more you do it, the more you understand it, the more you get better at it, the more inspiration, the more results you could get. Yeah, I think very smart the way he pins, but I guess I got way, many, uh, way more pins than him. Yeah. He got a lot of boards. Five thousand is not a lot. Yeah. So he figured out some of these that really resonate with people, like that psychology thing, you know, some of these inspirational photos and all of that. Infographics. You can get inspiration from Chuck right here. It seems that infographics are very popular. What's an infographic? It's just a graphical representation of some boring information. This one here. 10 performance review tips. That could have been easily a very boring bullet point list, but it has some design. It has some icons, it has some text, and now it's interesting. And then that one has 14 repins and 6 likes. Um, obviously, well, this is a really good one. Obviously, um, an infographic takes more work to to set up, but they're very popular. Uh, as we're seeing, there's a whole board here of 33,000 people following. So again, what, who cares about a like? Who cares about a follow? What does that all mean? Well, he's got 33,000 potential people as a captive audience, so that when he pins a brand new infographic about his company, how his company will save you 50% in, in one year, then those people will see it, 33,000. And if we just take it down to the 1% rule, What's 1% of 33,000? Uh, 300 or something? So 300 potential people that really care, yeah, 33,000 followers, but 300, only 300 people that really care, that's a lot of people still that care. So that's why you want more followers, more likes, more circles and all of that, because think about it in 1% terms. Well, that 1% will eventually follow through. He did. Yeah, he took. Um, he actually was here before this class existed. This is a relatively new class, but he took our other our other web classes. Definitely, he went through the whole program and he got a certificate. Um, so I do recommend that. So he was working for a company. That's what that's what he told me. He so he so he had a yeah he was part of Greenbird Media for a little while. Uh, and then he went out on his own, uh, and I think he's still working unofficially on his own, but still with companies. So yeah, whatever way you can do it, either ind independently or as part of a company. He was part of a media company. Or Greenbird Media. That's just that was just the name of the company, but they did websites and they did social media and marketing. They did everything. You know, the name of the company can be anything. 
uh, and he was with with those guys for for a while when he was in my classes I remember and then he he has his own company too if you go over to chuckdow.com that's the best way to connect with him also there to hire him to see what he's doing or writing and check his designs and follow him on social media and such right there hire me you see, you use more Twitter, right? For myself? Yeah. For myself, for my personal stuff, I like Google Plus the best. And then second place, Twitter. I like Google Plus a lot. Yeah, it, it can also work because the, the thing about Google Plus is that, um, you know, really take advantage of, of uh, communities. Yeah. They really work because they really work. They really work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you know these tricks, yeah, that's my picture. Um, and so it's really about uh, using community. So, you know, eleven hundred followers, not that much, but a lot of views because, yeah, people are seeing. I post something, I post a brand new YouTube video, and that drives traffic to that YouTube video. So I'm using communities. Popularity breeds popularity. You know, I log in, I say, oh, another follower, ho hum. Uh, because they really pay attention. Yeah, I feel like in Google Plus, it's not really about the follow. I mean, it is, but it's about the views. Yeah. Yeah. How many uh, community are you in Google Plus? Probably 20. That's it? Yeah, I try to focus on the ones because, for example, if I do a new YouTube video about Comic Con, there might be like two or three communities that, that my video would fit into. I think about it in terms, what communities exist that I can put this media content into? But I don't want to spam. I don't want to join three comic book communities and put the same video in those three because then that's kind of spammy. But uh, yeah, about 20 or so that really work. And again, following the rule of joining communities that are not so small, and no one's paying attention. So All in the community. Large, right? well, how, what is the biggest one, uh, or the one, uh, the largest one you follow? The biggest one that I'm in is one called something like uh, Funny Jokes or something, and it's got one million. Uh, and one time, and sometimes I put stuff in there, but obviously you're going to get drowned out pretty quickly. Yeah. And the second biggest one is the Android community. That's also got a million. But usually I'm trying to get into ones that are two hundred thousand, one hundred thousand. That's a pretty good. You know, think about one percent of that. That's still like a thousand people or a hundred people or whatever. That's still activity, and it snowballs, and you get followers and so forth. So if you're on Google, if you're on Pinterest, you're kind of doing the same thing. This will be great for the people that care about logos, about tattoos, obviously also what you care about to get attention on Pinterest. We'll look at one more concept here on Pinterest, and then we'll have some lab time. So again, look at the inspiration. Look at people's uh, activity on, on the different networks. And, and there's so many of them out there, you can easily focus on one or two that you really like and have been working. That's why there's that assignment of every Monday. You should be also writing down on your Excel document how your followers and stuff are doing on the different networks. That's how it's going to be telling you, oh, I'm doing pretty well on Google+, I'm doing pretty well on Twitter, not so well on Facebook. Well, then you can decide, I need to try harder on Facebook, or forget Facebook, I'm doing really well on Pinterest. So those analytics, those statistics, you should, you should be tracking them so that you can tell what's, what's working. Is there any way to control how many followers you have? Any way to control how many followers you get? Uh, hmm. Well, it's all the techniques that we talk about here. It's it's very easy to get a lot of followers when you pay, but they're not legitimate, and it's it's really more effort to to get legitimate followers through the techniques we're talking about. But these legitimate followers are going to really care. And they're going to snowball, and you're going to get shares and more likes on top of likes and follows on top of follows. So it's not an easy answer. That's why we have this 16 week class. Question? Uh, if, you, if you want to go, if you're searching for something, and instead of going to the website, do you want to go to this 
to their uh, Peter X profile instead? How do you do that? You mean a particular account? Yes, let's, let's say you go to search for something and then uh, and then instead of visiting the cat website, you want to go to their Pinterest. Okay, yeah, try clicking instead at the very bottom because these links over here will take you to the original website. It's always going to tell you who posted it. So oh. try clicking on their name because this, this was going to segue into what I, I was going to talk about in that, okay, I want to get followers. Here's another tactic. Do a search for whatever topic, whatever keyword. I look up cookie recipes, and I see a bunch of results. Well, the, these things that have been posted are going to lead me toward more followers. So for example, I'm browsing around, and I'm looking at all of these great photos, but I'm also keeping an eye out on the statistics of a photo. 32,000 repaints, so that was shared 32,000 times. 2,800 favorites, 18 comments. Okay, let me look at another one down here. Twix thumbprint cookie. This one's got 29,000, 2,607. So the point of looking at these statistics is to see there are people interacting with these pins. So some amount of those people would also care about what I am pinning. I would say maybe focus a little bit more on the ones that have more comments because it's very easy to click a favorite and move on with your life. And it's still pretty easy and quick to click on the reshare and move on with your life. But it takes a little bit more effort to add a comment. So I'm going to look at this one over here that says it's got 12 comments. And by that I mean if you click on the, if you click on the little magnifying glass to expand it, it's going to show you the whole pin. 10,000 repins, 1,000 likes. Scroll down. Here's the comments. So Addison J wrote this. Nutri Nurturing Marriage did that. Sip Smile Cook wrote that. Three weeks ago, nine days ago. These are people that are that are being active. These are people that might also care about my cookies and my cakes and such. So I can go to their profiles. This is when you really want to do right-click, open new tab, so you don't lose your current tab. And now I'm looking at Carrie's Experimental Kitchen. I'm looking at this account. It's got boards and such. Stats. 14,000 followers, 1,000 following. It shows she's judicious. She's not going to follow every single person that follows her. She just got a notification that said, Victor Bakery follows you. She may say thanks, move on with her life. She may say thanks and come to my profile to see what I have and maybe follow me. But based on this ratio, she's pretty picky, perhaps. So I'm going to go back to that original pin. Let's see what uh, Addison J is about in a new tab. 42 followers, 91 following. The ratio is that she follows more people than follow her, so she might follow me too. I don't really seem to care about almost anything here, but if I click follow, I would follow all of those boards. Instead, I might really care about health and fitness. I want to follow that one board. I can do that. She still gets a notification that says Victor's Bakery followed you, followed your board. Then again, she might say, who's this Victor's Bakery? She checks out my profile with all my amazing photos, clicks follow, or not. That's why you spend 10 minutes a day to try a little bit of these tactics. Maybe I wouldn't check this one from 37 weeks ago. That's almost a year ago. There's 52 weeks in a year, right? This one's even more judicious. 18,000 followers, but only following 209. So my stuff better be amazing. She might not follow. I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go back over here to the hunting, the fishing. 18, 18 comments. Let's see. Is there a way to know where they live? No. We are trying to send you the thing, and she lives on Brazil. So I, I, I sell cupcakes. She's not going to buy from me. 
exactly but I believe when you go to their profile I believe there is a spot for people to write a location so if they wrote it you would see it on the back <clears throat> yeah so this particular one didn't so I don't know then it might not be a very good prospect and anyway she's only following four so I would ignore that one that's what I would be doing here let's see Megan wrote a big old essay uh, she's saying a bunch of stuff but Anyway, I'll, I'll check out her profile 11 weeks ago, following 39, the ratio, not that many followers, not that many following. I could give it a shot and follow, and maybe I will get right here, follow food. So then I would then keep an eye out for, for her follows. What's this one? 239, 237. So look at that ratio. If they are following more than they have followers, that could be a sign that you'll get a follower. If they have more followers and following, that means that they're picky with who they follow. So you might not get a follow. But at least I'm trying with the people that seem to be active, because there's millions of people on, on Pinterest. Right here I can tangibly see these are the people that are caring about things that I care about, like homemade samosa Girl Scout cookies. And then I can go to these particular uh, particular profiles. No followers, no following. Skip 106 followers, 71 following. Close ratio, so maybe. It doesn't take much to follow, and then you can unfollow later. Like, uh, on Instagram, you do that, though, there's, like, an app you can find for people that unfollow you. For people to, that unfollow you? Yeah, so, like, for example, um, I'm following more than follow me, right? But if they don't follow me that I don't really care about, I can see right away when they don't follow me. I don't doubt that there's that kind of app also for Pinterest. I haven't researched it myself, but there's probably that kind of app too, but not everyone knows about it. No, and then also you've got multiple accounts. Like I have my business account to the link, and you go to check, you go back and forth and check. And you can say who blocked you, who added you, um, stuff like this. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't heard about one here. What's the name of that app? The app for uh, Instagram is mm -hmm. called. Oh, just followers. Just call followers? Yeah, and you have like a kind of like an Instagram thing. Yeah. Insta follow, I think it's called. You use a follower. Click it. So there's different there's different versions out there and yeah. um like right now I can check two people follow me and then the scammer that will follow you, they just follow you to follow you. Yeah. And you can follow them right there. And then so there's uh, there's this aspect as well and this tactic to, to get followers. Obviously, if I was a spammer, I'd just follow everyone. But you don't want to do that. You want to take some time. Will that person even follow me? Because the spammers don't care. They're just going to run an algorithm to follow a thousand people in one hour or faster, but for you, you're going to take a little bit of time. How many comments here? Five. Let's see how many are actually relevant, maybe. So 20 of the best cookie recipes, but doesn't even have a logo. I'm going to skip that. Randy Hay just want what I needed. Not, so I'm going to check that one, maybe, but it's 45 weeks old. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty good ratio there. I might get a follow. She is following a lot of people. And so I'm trying to build up an audience. Um, I'm trying to follow so that I can get some follows back. And to unfollow, I can just go back to my main account. This will tell me here how many I'm following. I can click there. Pinners and boards. And I can stop following. So. It is a bit of a spammy tactic to, to follow a lot and then quickly unfollow. I would obviously follow accounts that are relevant that I would like to see their stuff. Then um, 
if they do follow you, just because of maybe out of a sense of honor, I would keep following them if they followed you, although it's not required. But if they never followed you and you're trying to get their follow, then it's perfectly fine to not follow them unless you really care about their content. And so if they have a, like a certain amount of tags that you put or like mean the hashtags? It doesn't matter. You, you, there is no limit, but at a certain point, it looks like too much. You know, most of these are really short. And then you cannot post too many letters as well. So they have a limit. I think. I think there is a limit, but it's like a thousand characters or five thousand or something. So the point is, I wouldn't write a whole essay on these things. Look at that. This is enough for me to understand what it is. Then I can look at the picture or follow the link. So I wouldn't worry too much about putting lots and lots of text and especially lots of hashtags because a lot of hashtags then make you look like a spammer mm -hmm. so, you know three to five hashtags and a little text and that's gonna be good and again look at what the competition is doing and make some graphics or photos or whatever like them little by little it's at the beginning maybe going to seem like it's not very effective but the more you do it it's gonna snowball into more results. So we're going to end the main lecture in a moment, but any other general questions then about Pinterest or the assignment? I, I have a question from the last slide. Mm -hmm. Yes. I saw the video of Thursday, mm -hmm. and uh, the, one of the first steps is to convert from personal to business. Mm -hmm. So when you convert your account, <coughs> do you lose all the uh, board that you're following as personal? No, it still stays the same. Everything should stay the same. The, the big difference why you want to do the conversion is because up here on your settings, you get these extra settings that are not available for person. But you shouldn't lose any of your content. Yeah, my question was about losing, but it's on my board. So, or on the, the, the board that, uh, that, that I'm looking at. No, it, uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. More or less the same products on all the, 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 you know, the services like uh, Twitter. Uh, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of we're gonna see a lot of repetition. Yeah, you can use the same uh, information, similar tactics. I would do something like this also on Twitter. I would search on Twitter for hashtags. I would see what popular tweets are, but then the people that are replying on Twitter, and then follow them or interact with them, and some of them will follow back. All right, so we're going to end at this point. If you check Blackboard, you're going to see the homework is there. It's due a week from today. It's to use Pinterest. So look at the instructions, and you can print them out if you want. And that's it for the moment. Thanks for coming. We'll have some lab time until about uh, 7, uh, 7.10 or so.